So I picked myself up another project and uh, I got myself a 1964 Vespa 90. Want to see it? Alright. There it is. Some assembly may be required. See instructions for details and ask your parents for assistance. Anyway, uh, this is it. This is my new project. This is going to be uh, the biggest project I've ever taken on ever since ever. Um, this is a small frame Vespa. It's a 90cc two-stroke. There's the engine right there, sitting on that... Uh, Eric focuses in now. Complete running engine. And, uh, yeah, it's all here. Got the two wheels. Boxes upon boxes upon boxes of parts. And the real downfall is she needs a little bit of bodywork. Um, there's a stress crack right here that needs to be welded and ground and all that happy stuff. Um, missing a side cowling cover, the engine cover. Uh, what else we got here? Pretty much all there. I mean, the fuel tank's there, the seat's over there under those blankets. Got the kickstand. The uh, forks are in the closet over here. I just wanted to get them out of the way. The fender its all there. Um, more parts. More parts. Here's the Vespa 90 badge. See, it was painted black originally. That's not uh, anything new. That's original paint right there. But it was painted black. I've got the Piaggio badge that was taken off. And I've got this Piaggio and Company Genoa Italy badge. Why the f did I take this on? Well, that's an interesting question that you never asked, but I'll tell you anyway. Um, well, you see, my dad does a lot of wheeling and dealing on Craigslist. He's always buying and selling stuff and trading and trading up and trading down and trading sideways. He does a lot of that, and he knows, because he's just like me, I'm basically a miniature version of him. Um, was. Now I'm about the same size as him. But anyway, <laughs> he has a passion for antiques and he has a passion for old vehicles. And he knows I do too. So he called me up and said, hey, you know that old air compressor I have in the garage? I'm like, yeah, the one you'll never fix. And <laughs> he's got, he had an old, um, it was actually originally used in a clean room, but it was a M-Glow Medic Air Compressor. And uh, it's basically a two-cylinder compressor inside a giant soundproof box. And uh, it's a pretty good-sized unit, probably about the same size as that scooter, about three times as heavy. And um, he got it from work. He paid nothing for it. It was being thrown out, so he, he grabbed it about five years ago. And he was going to rebuild it, and it never did, never did, never did. Well, he finally put it up on Craigslist, and someone had offered him this for it as an even swap and my dad being the sneaky guy he is decided to take him up on it so he calls me up and says hey I need you to come with me to grab this air compressor bring it over and pick up the scooter that I'm gonna I'm gonna take you know and he made it sound like he was going to take it as a project for himself like he needs another one so I'm like all right yeah sure Whatever, let's, let's go get it. So, we show up at the guy's house, and my dad knows that, you know, I know a few things about scooters, so he had me look it over, and he says, what do you think? I'm like, well, you know, it, it looks to be all there. I'm sure there's a few missing parts, but otherwise, it's all, it all appears to be intact. I mean, it's a, it's a Vespa, so no matter what, it's worth something. You know, I mean, in the condition it's in, it's worth more than that air compressor. So, um, I'm like, yeah, go for it. I mean, you, you can't lose. It, it would be impossible to lose. So he said, okay, fine. 
And uh, they shook hands, and my dad said, okay, load up your new project. I'm like, yeah, really? <laughs> I was actually very happy. Um, believe it or not, you know, um, some people's dads give them brand new cars and motorcycles and stuff, and, and my dad gives me projects, and I love it. I think it's great because, it, you know, I'll have, uh, have something to work on for a little while. So, um, with that, we brought it home. Well, I brought it to my house anyway, and uh, I uh, brought it in here. So, yeah, that's the story. That's how I got it. So, my dad is, uh, my dad was, um, he's a good man. <laughs> you have no idea. He's a good man. And uh, he uh, he knows what I like, and he uh, I can't believe he did that for me. But you know that was that was a very very nice thing he did. He knows I always wanted a Vespa, and uh, now I have one. I would never buy one of these. I mean, I would never go out and spend. This is worth probably about five hundred bucks, as it is. Um, I would have never done that. I would have never gone out and and, and bought one like this because. I know what it needs. It needs everything. It needs everything. It needs tires. It needs cables. It needs wiring. I mean, it's all here, but a lot of the stuff here is pretty much, you know, it's just so damn old and cracking. All the rubber parts have to be replaced. All the hoses. Um, did I mention cables? Shocks. Um, you know, the shocks are probably gone. It's only got 6,400 miles on the odometer. The, uh, the odometer is here somewhere. <laughs> In this pile of rubble, there's a speedometer. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Small little thing. Um, not even lit up either. This is a pretty Spartan scooter. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of features. It was just a basic, basic transportation. But the, uh, this has to be taken apart. Unfortunately, the dial is totally faded out. Um, I'm going to see what I can do to restore it. But it's soldered together. should be an easy fix. Uh, it's also stuck. So i got to look at why that is. Um, all the lighting is here. All the mirrors. Um, I'm going to put new mirrors on it because the old ones are rusted. Um, headlight. i uh, got the carburetor is in beautiful condition. On this model, the carburetor is actually mounted to the frame normally. And it connects to the engine with a long uh, tube, and um, unfortunately, that tube is missing. So I got I, mean, I would have to replace that anyway. But here's the exhaust. Here's the intake. I think. I'm not really sure. I don't really know a lot about Vespas. This is my first one. And uh, <clears throat> but the engine, I'm told, is in good running condition. Um, he said he tore it apart. Now here's, uh, yeah, here's the, here's the kicker. This is where it really gets depressing. Um, it needs body work. It, it, it needs body work. Um, it looks good from this side. It's just a few dents here and there. But when you look at the other side, let's take a look at the other side. There's a nice dent right here. And it's not just a regular old dent. This one's going to have to be done, you know, with professional body work tools. My plan is to bring this entire chassis, obviously it's one piece, to a body shop. And I'm going to tell them, I'm going to give them a blank check and say, have fun. <laughs> no, that's pretty much what I'm going to do. Um, I'm, 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 mis I'm estimating it's going to need about, easy, easy 1500 in repairs, just the body alone. And uh, the rest of it, I'm going to put together myself. I'm going to go through the engine. I'm going to go through all the all everything. It's going to be gone through. I mean, at least the good news is it's a part. It's actually a good and a bad thing. It's good because I can at least get a good idea as to what I'm in for uh, without touching a wrench. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's a part, so I have to find places to put all these things. Um. And in a small home, it's not easy. I mean, I have the whole second floor. I could put it up there, but that's my bedroom, for freak's sake. So, you know, it's going to need a lot of odds and ends, a little bit of screws, nuts, bolts. Um, complete over, complete rehab. Uh, we're talking soup to nuts here. 
Um, I haven't even touched the engine, and I I haven't touched anything, and I'm already looking at a bill exceeding twenty five hundred dollars. Um, now that's where the good news is, because it is a Vespa, a properly done restoration, a properly executed restoration will net a vehicle that is worth more than my investment. Won't compensate me for my time, but for my monetary investment, I can get it all back. Um, a properly restored example can fetch as high as, but lower than four grand, um, at least in this market. So, it's a 90. It's not a 50. The 90s are worth a lot more than the 50s. They're more desirable. Um, it has a top speed of about 45 miles an hour. Um, so it's, cruis it's a cruisable scooter. I mean, you could take this anywhere. Just not the highway. A 50, eh, you're getting a little dicey there. But a 90 should be good enough. I am not planning on doing any performance modifications. That is not in the agenda. No performance. I want it stock. I'm going to keep it the original red, and that is it. Um, I don't know what the deal is with this black, if that's factory or not. Actually, it doesn't appear to be. It's not a very good job. This is probably something someone did to maybe modify it, juice it up a little bit back in the day. Um, the fuel tank is rusty. But it's not a gone, it's not a lost cause. Um, actually, the fuel tank. I have experience doing those. I'm going to do what I can to restore it. Um, I have used a cream kit before, um, but I'm, I've heard a lot of good things about uh, Red Coat. Actually, I've heard better things about Red Coat, so I might just do that. Um, I I actually use cream on my Elite 150 tank, and it quickly discolored, so. I'm not so sure about the cream product. Also, whatever I use has to be compatible with two-stroke fuel, so two-stroke oil without degrading. But, you know, the uh, this is a small-frame Vespa. The small-frame models were, um, you know, they were smaller, yes, uh, but they were not as elaborate as the larger models. It doesn't have a glove box. It doesn't have a, uh, a storage box in the side here. Um, you know, so little things like that it doesn't have. It doesn't have directionals. It doesn't have an electric start. It uses an old-fashioned 6-volt um, charging system, um, you know, to run the lights and the magneto. I mean, it's a pretty basic, pretty basic scooter. But that's what I love about it, you know. It's, it's, it's basic. It's, um, you know, and, and being a Vespa, it is like, this is the quintessential scooter. Um... I mean, these were the guys who basically created, well, Vespa, or Piaggio, and uh, and Cushman were the two big companies to really push the scooter market in America. Um, I think Cushman was probably a little more popular because they were made stateside, but anyway, it has, this is the, uh, the only storage bin this unit has, and this is big enough for about, you know, a little bottle of two-stroke oil. Remember, this is not a self-mixing unit. It is a, um, you have to pre-mix the fuel and oil, so you got to make sure you have the right amount of fuel to oil ratio. Um, unfortunately, you know, all the instructions and operation and everything like that, how to brake in the engine, it's all printed on the, uh, in the leg shield, but that's all going to be, you know, ruined once I have it repainted. Um... It's just a shame that it, it's in the shape it's in. But it's also good because, you know, it was it was kept in a barn for many years. And uh, it didn't get all the rust damage that these usually have when they sit outside. The body is almost rust-free. It, it is practically rust-free. Um, underneath, um, the entire bottom of the, of, the, of the frame is absolutely perfect. If you look inside the... Uh, the engine bay, let's take a flashlight here. Oh, there's the seat. The seat is actually not really torn up, but it's cracking around the seams. So I'm going to have it reupholstered. But let's take a look. I mean, this is definitely worth fixing. I mean, look at that. There's no rust, really, at all inside there. You know, I mean, it's, it's solid. I mean, there's a little surface rust there in the back, but, I mean, my Helix has that. 
and a little bit of spider evidence there. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's all there. VIN numbers here, so it's not really a, it's not hot. At least I don't think it is. And there's the tunnel that goes all the way through the unit. Let's take a look. See if I can get the camera in there. Yeah, it goes down. Yeah. But, you know, it's not rotted out. Oops, it's not rotted out. So, you know, if it turns out that that dent is going to cost, you know, nine grand to fix, what I'll do is I'll leave it. Why not? You know, why not leave it? Just let it, you know, give it some patina. You see, someone tried to beat it out and use a torch. I don't want to. I don't want to mess with it. I don't trust my abilities uh, enough, you know, to do that. Oh, here's another thing. Like mo most mopeds, it doesn't have an ignition switch, and I, I figured that out too. It's a very basic machine. Um, no ignition switch. It does have a, a, a headset lock, uh, but the key is missing. I'm gonna have my dad make me a new key. One of the benefits of him being a locksmith, <laughs> well, at least as a hobby. But I'm going to have this lock, um, either replace the lock with a new one. Because um, you, you can't leave a Vespa in a parking space without locking it or securing it somehow. You're just asking for trouble. These are one of the most commonly stolen scooters, I believe, in the U.S. Um, because they're so easy to steal and they're so easy to sell. Um, you know, they're worth so much money that you can sell them very easily. Um, at least sell them for parts. But It doesn't appear to be uh, heavily damaged. Oh yeah, here's all the right work. All the trim pieces. Now unfortunately all those rivets were ground off, so they all have to be replaced. Um, that's the only way to get them off. I, I mean, I would have drilled them myself, but... Yeah, these are um, these are what actually hold the rubber strips to the floor. Some of them are a little bent up, um, but like I said, you know, before the parts for this thing are so easy to find. I mean, I can buy entire body panels. I can buy this entire panel, this leg shield, if I want to. I can't buy that, unfortunately. I couldn't find anyone who sells a uh, like a repair panel for this. Here, let's sit over here and get a better look at it. Yeah. I definitely love the body style, though. So here's how I see this happening. I, I, I envision someone's going to have to use, like, one of those um, slide hammer-type body pullers and just kind of work this out. Once it's worked out, it's going to need some body filler for the creases. Um... But this is going to be the killer. I'm going to have, before I touch anything, before I buy any parts, before I do anything, I'm going to have this repair work quoted out. I'm going to bring it to a couple of different shops. And I'm going to see if anyone's willing to take it on. Like I said, I'm, I'm estimating about $1,500 for it, including the paint job. All that money will go into, you know, into this right here. There's one crack in the leg shield, and that's right here. Now, this isn't from rust or anything. This is a fatigue crack. I'm not sure what would have caused it. Uh, interesting side note, it was last registered in 2002. So it's been off the road for 13 years. Jesus. <laughs> Has it really been that long? It's been off the road for 13 years. Um... Looks like the paint is actually pretty good under here. There would have been a rubber mat right here, I think. Like some kind of a rubber mat or something. This is where that Piaggio tag goes. And I believe this is for the fuel shutoff. I'm not really sure about that. But it, it, I think it lines right up with the fuel shutoff valve on the tank. Um, did I mention... Yeah, it's a, it's a 90cc with a 3-speed manual, so... Um, with these, you would actually have on the uh, headstock, you can actually kind of see it from here, but there's a clutch lever and a shifter. And what you do is you pull the clutch in and shift it by turning the grip up or down. It's pretty neat how they did that. All cable operated. 
But the leg shield, I'm told to look out for creases. I don't really see any creases. I just see one right there, but that's, that's probably from the... Yeah, you want to make sure there's no creasing in the... Uh, in certain areas of the leg shield, because that would indicate that it went down hard. It definitely went down, or something happened to it. Probably got hit by a car. Um, to cause that kind of damage. That's a pretty, that's a pretty massive impact. I'm just hoping a body shop can do this. You can see, like, a, yeah, like I said, someone had tried to knock this dent out, and I, um, I think the only way to do it is to pull it with a, uh, with one of those tack. There's a, there's a name for those. I don't know what it is. I'm not a body man, but it can be pulled out. I'm pretty sure. If not, if not, um, I'm gonna have to figure out something. Um, ideally, I'd like to just replace this panel, but uh, it can't be done if you can't find a full panel. Well, look at this. You can see that this this was definitely an amateur custom job here. Someone tried to uh, to dress it up at some point. But um, overall, though, it's not in bad shape. <laughs> this will be fixed easily. Um, I believe if you just put a... And I'm okay with this if, if they put just a little piece of metal behind it and, and tack it back. I mean, I don't know what would be necessary or why it would crack here. There's nothing mounted here, um, unless, there, unless there was something mounted there. What kind of a dickhead puts an inspection sticker on the leg shield like that? Uh, I don't know why they would do that. <clears throat> New Hampshire usually puts them on the fork. I don't know why they would, I mean, that, it, seriously, if an inspection station did that to me, I would be pissed. Body work on these is not cheap. Paint work is not cheap. And that's, that's just not where that belongs. But, anyway. So, yeah, that's my next project. Now i got to find a place to put it all. <laughs> Could be interesting. But I've been pricing out parts. Uh, pricing isn't bad. It's just when you add it all together, it gets expensive. So this is going to be like an incremental thing. I'm not even planning on working on it this winter. Um, again, the first thing I do before I put any money into it, I want to get this body looked at. Um, it'll fit in the back of my car, so that'll be how that, I, I, that really helps a lot. But I want to bring it down to uh, got a few shops in mind that. Um, that come highly regarded, so I'm just hoping they'll take it on. Now, I don't know why there's four holes on this side and only two on that side. I wonder why that's all about. What that's for. But, uh, what else do I have here? Yeah, this right here. Um, piece of metal bright work. Looks like it's stainless or aluminum. This must go, yeah, you know, I don't know, to figure that out. It goes somewhere, right? I think I have two of these. Yeah, I got two of them. All bent to shit. So, yeah. Hmm. And that just goes right there. So. Wiring is all there. Um, it's uh, it's in rough shape though, mainly because the outer plastic uh, wiring sheath is uh, is pretty bad. What I could do is replace all that with uh, shrink tubing. Keep the original wiring. Make sure it's all solid though first. And the wiring runs. I have to go down this head tube. Oh, that's going to be fun. That's going to be real fun. Oh, wait, actually, no, I can go th straight through here. I'm going to have to put some fissure tape through there. And then wire, uh, run it up the sides here. So. But it looks to be, uh, looks to line up okay. I don't think the body's bent or heavily damaged. It's definitely seen better days. 
Why would they grind those off like that? That doesn't make any sense to me. And there's better ways to do things like that. This this just doesn't seem right. But anyway, all right. Well, hey, that's all I got for now. Oh yeah, let's take a look at that front fender again. So it looks like they uh, they tried to cut or torch this bolt off, and they ended up cutting a hole through the fender. That's using excessive heat, and they shouldn't have used heat to begin with. They would they should have drilled it out. Um, so, I'm thinking this fender kind of, you know, replace it. For what they cost, I can get a new fender, brand new fender, pre-painted for like 70 bucks. Italian made, from what I can find. So, the, uh, speedometer cable runs right through the head tube. And that's it. So, yeah. I'm missing one thing. I uh, took a look at all the parts and kind of inventoried things briefly, and I found that I'm missing um, the throttle sh uh, the throttle um, tube, throttle tube, and the attachment that goes in the end of that. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta dig one of those up. I need the whole throttle tube and oh, the pulley. They call it a pulley. That attaches the tube to the cable. So I'm also missing the grips and all the other rubber stuff. So I gotta get a grommet kit, cables, all the cables, replace them all. Oh yeah, I got my work cut out for me. So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, wish me luck. I'm gonna try to give you guys quick updates as I move along. Again, the first thing I need to do is get this body looked at, find out what I'm looking at for cost. Um, that could that could mean the difference between this being a parts bike and a restorable classic. Just hope for the latter. Huh? I want it to be a a restorable classic. I mean, I've taken basket cases before, like this radio, and turned them into working pieces of art. So I'm hoping I can do that again on a much larger scale. And thanks for watching. And with the fuel tank removed. You can really get a good a good sense as to the condition that this body is really in. I mean, there is not a speck of rust anywhere. A little bit of sawdust, but that's okay. It's even got this uh, tag still affixed. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's in such good condition. Inside and out. Unfortunately, that dent really puts a damper on things. I'm sure it can be fixed. I'm seriously hoping